Zombie movies are horror's best comfort food, and as a result, I'm sure you've seen your favourites over and over again. Being human and fortunately not yet undead, we of course like to look at movies in close detail, and there are a few moments in the subgenre that demand to be paused for closer inspection. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 8 most paused zombie horror movie moments. Number 8. Tires in the Horde, Shaun of the Dead Starting with something of an easter egg rather than a moment of gore, Shaun of the Dead is the kind of movie that rewards you for pausing and paying close attention on rewatches. Whether you're pausing the opening credits to identify characters you will later see under heavy zombie makeup, looking closely at televisions at the end to find out the fates of bit characters, or pausing on quick snaps of text to be rewarded with jokes you didn't even know were there, i.e. the place with all the fish, there is plenty waiting to be found. The moment in question here, however, concerns the zombie horde that's surrounding the Winchester pub our heroes are holed up in. If you investigate the zombies outside, not only will you be able to identify a few from earlier, but you'll also spot a familiar character if you're fans of star Simon Pegg and director Edgar Wright's previous work. See, that's because his zombified version of Mad Lad Raver Tires from the TV show Spaced is part of the crowd, still in his iconic yellow getup. I hope he's doing well. Number 7. Luda's Zombie Baby, Dawn of the Dead, 2004 Aside from launching the careers of director Zack Snyder and writer James Gunn, 2004's Dawn of the Dead is widely hailed as both one of the best horror remakes of all time and one of the best zombie films of the last 20 years. Easily the most shocking and distressing reason for this though is the birth of Andre and Luda's undead baby. Andre as a character is an effective take on the cliched petty criminal just trying to do the best for his impending family. Likewise, Luda is a sympathetic mother-to-be whose choice to hide her bite from everyone except her husband is kind of understandable, if obviously misguided and doomed to get everyone killed. Eventually, when the infection starts to spread, Luda gets tied up, dies, and reanimates as a monster because what did anyone else expect? Devastated and conflicted, Andre subdues her before helping her deliver her child. Afterwards, Norma discovers them, shoots Luda, and then engages in a shootout with Andre, during which both are fatally wounded. It all culminates in chaos and the rest of the survivors discovering the carnage on display, as well as the grey, dead-eyed, and shrieking newborn zombie child, whom the resilient Anna Clark quickly murders out of necessity. Is it horrifying? Yes. Is it still a bit cute? Also yes. Did you have to pause to get a closer look? Absolutely yes. Number 6. Feeling Gutsy, City of the Living Dead The first of two Lucio Fulci entries on this list, 1980's City of the Living Dead marks the start of the Italian filmmaker's Gates of Hell trilogy, completed by both The Beyond and The House by the Cemetery the following year. Like Pia's Dario Argento and the Barber Boys, Mario and his son Lamberto, Fulci was known for depicting fantastically extreme carnage. Thus, viewers should have known what they were getting themselves in for here. Even so, it's difficult not to become nauseated while watching the movie's most disturbingly unsightly set piece. In it, teenage couple Rose and Tommy are kissing in Tommy's car, only for Rose to suddenly see flashes of villain Father Thomas staring at her menacingly. Right away, she starts crying blood, slowly regurgitates her organs, and then rips out Tommy's brain. Whereas most directors would linger on the debauchery for merely a few seconds, Fulci tortures Rose outright, as well as the audience, with roughly a dozen glimpses of her increasingly helpless, distressing, and repulsive downfall. While the practical effect is of course effective, it's actually the crying blood bit that always gets me. It just looks so uncomfortable. Number 5. The Snyder Cut Army of the Dead Considering his status as a major Hollywood director and the fact that this isn't even his first zombie movie, it was to be expected that Zack Snyder would slip a few easter eggs into his latest blockbuster epic, Army of the Dead. The zombie heist film has plenty of frames you'll want to pause and interrogate, which to Snyder's credit, even if you don't like the lad, you can still appreciate that he does deliver some striking images here and there, however one cute one was actually revealed before the movie's release. During a visualization of the Las Vegas heist going off without a hitch, you get a brief shot of a vault being opened, and in the top left, you can actually see the canisters of Zack Snyder's Justice League cut sitting snugly on the shelf. Obviously, the Snyder cut saw the light of day earlier this year, however when this film was being made, it might as well have been in a zombie protected vault. Number 4. The Red Queen's Laser Grid, Resident Evil the Resident Evil film series is often chastised for its dwindling quality and persistent inauthenticity, especially when compared to its video game counterparts, but each of the six movies offer at least a few noteworthy parts, even if they are mostly noteworthy because they're just daft. 
Arguably the best of the bunch though is the famous laser corridor scene from Paul W.S. Anderson's 2002 original. After reluctantly teaming up, Mila Jovovic's hero Alice, Colin Salmon's commando leader James One Shade, and several other tough-as-nail soldiers infiltrate the Umbrella Corporation's hive facility and attempt to shut down the movie's villainous AI, the Red Queen. While en route, Shade and his team enter a high-tech passageway decorated by white lights and glass. Unsurprisingly, the Red Queen's defense system locks them in and sends several increasingly complex laser configurations at them, before long all but Shade have been sliced in incredibly creative ways. This is when we get the Red Queen's magnum opus though, a checkerboard laser screen that's too big and too fast for anyone to dodge. As a result, Pooper Colin Salmon is instantaneously cut into dozens of meaty squares, with an arresting shot of his lacerated face etching itself into viewers' memories before he collapses. Number 3. Babyface, Brain Dead aka Dead Alive if there's one movie that challenges Sam Raimi's Evil Dead 2 as the king of excessively gory and goofy zombie horror comedies, it's Peter Jackson's Brain Dead. The 1992 classic is about as over the top and rewatchable as possible, with at least a dozen delightfully silly and or disgusting occurrences to pinpoint. Easily the top combination of the two though comes when Elizabeth Mullen's Rita gets her head ripped in half during the legendary party sequence. A meek and nerdy lass, she's perhaps the most innocent and kindly character in the film, despite not having too much screen time. That makes it all the more hilariously horrendous then when she's woken up by the zombie baby who'd already been wreaking havoc all over the place, who literally climbs up her throat, pushing his hands out of her ears, grabs her cheekbones, and then tears her face apart. God, just saying that out loud, I'm really worried about how many of these moments we're actually going to be able to show without YouTube striking us down. I'm, I'm sorry if this is really censored. Even worse, the kid then forces Rita's body to attack more people before being lit on fire and legging it. Although it's a quick moment, the sheer shock, wit, and monstrousness of it all leaves an indelible impression. Number 2. Splinter to the Eyeball, Zombie 2 Throughout the 70s and 80s, Italian cinema was ripe with unofficial and unconnected sequels to major Hollywood staples. While several of these have gained fame, or infamy I guess, over the years, such as 1975's Return of the Exorcist and 1980's Alien 2 on Earth, virtually no other contender equals the cult classic stature of Lucio Fulci's international breakthrough, Zombie 2. Titled as such to cash in on the success of Zombie, which was the European edit of Dawn of the Dead, it follows an ill-fated crew on a Caribbean island that succumbs to a voodoo curse. In typical Fulci fashion, many memorable scenes like the underwater zombie vs shark fights stick out. Yet none rival the uncomfortable tragedy and torture of what befalls Paolo Menard. After telling her husband David that she wishes to leave, but to no avail since he wants to stay and do more research, she retreats to their beach house. That night, she hears a commotion outside and before long, a zombie breaks in and attacks her, resulting in her truly gnarly demise as the zombie slowly pushes her head into a piece of splintered wood. Fulci's successive shots of it gradually entering her eye are tense, horrifying, and yet kind of abjectly fascinating. Number 1. Rhodes Gets Ripped Apart, Day of the Dead, 1985 There are few main characters in zombie movies more lovably despicable than Captain Henry Rhodes. Played to perfection by Joseph Pilato, he spends the majority of the film as a chauvinistic tyrant who prioritises his militaristic agenda and over-the-top machismo over the knowledge, feelings, and logic of everyone around him. Thus, it's no surprise that Romero gives him one of the most satisfyingly explicit and deserved deaths in the genre. After imprisoning and, on occasion, murdering the other protagonists, Rhodes selfishly tries to leave them all for dead and save himself from the impending horde of undead walkers. Unfortunately for him, he's found by the movie's more sympathetic and intelligent zombie bub, who shoots him as an act of revenge. Screaming while scrambling away, Rhodes eventually reaches an exit, however he's met with a legion of bloodthirsty foes on the other side, all of whom proceed to rip him apart in gorgeously grotesque detail. It's one of the great Tom Savini's finest creations, and it absolutely must be suspended and studied to be truly savoured. So that's our list, what do you guys think down in the comments below? How many of these zombie moments did you yourself have to pause, and are there any good ones that I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and also head over to What Culture Horror for more lists like this on the regular. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.